Nigeria's Senate President on Tuesday has announced the majority leaders of the National Assembly. Senator Godswill Pabio announced Bamidele Opayemi representing Ekiti Central Senatorial District as the majority leader of the upper chamber of the National Assembly, while former Ebony State Governor Dave Mahi was announced as the deputy majority leader. In the minority leadership tussle, former Sokoto State Governor Aminu Tambuwa lost in his bid to lead the Senate's minority members. The new leadership of the House also saw Senator Alun Dume, one of the longest served members of the National Assembly, emerge as the majority weep. As the 10th National Assembly prepares to swing into full action, the emergence of these leaders has reopened a part to legislative politics and expectations. Now, joining me tonight for this discussion, I have Dr. Judy Johnson, Director of Special Programs, Nigeria Institute of Journalism, who joins us from Lagos. And I also have in the studio here with us in Lagos, uh, Dr. Omoshala Deji, a political scientist. A warm welcome to you both and thanks for joining me on Politics HQ tonight. I'd like to start with Dr. Johnson. Now, Dr. Johnson, today we saw the emergence of uh, some uh, leadership positions in the National Assembly. Can you provide some insight into some of the factors you think played a role in the emergence of Simon Mwak Dwan as the Senate minority leader? And how did his background and political connections contribute uh, to this appointment? Also, we would well, like then. to know the role of a minority uh, leader in the, in the National Assembly. Well, um, first, is a, thank you for having me. I'm joining in from Kaduna, okay. not from Lagos. Well, um, it's, it's important to understand that the, the executive leadership position of the National Assembly is what we have witnessed being ruled out. Um, the members we elect, the Senate President and Deputy Senate President, while other principal officers are nominated by political parties, don't forget that these candidates, a senator-elect, were sponsored as candidates and eventually won the election mm -hmm. by political parties. So it is the political party under normal political culture that um, nominates who is the political, um, who is the minority leader, the Senate leader, all of those that are designated in various positions. But we have seen an aberration to that effect starting from 2011 with the emergence of Tambuwal as the Speaker of the House of Rep against the interest and the wishes of, mm -hmm. of the membership and leadership of PDP then. And we have seen uh, what also transpired in, 20, in 2019 over the appointment of the minority leader by the PDP. Uh, the nominee of PDP was not eventually selected and the majority party tends to use their influence. And I think that is also playing out here now because against all expectation, except you are not a keen washer of the political Event. landscape, you'll be shocked with some of the names that have emerged as because it, it's against the expectation, particularly from the minority party point of view. Even from the majority party point of view, you are seeing that there's a lot of ripples bringing up his head now. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Johnson. Let me bring you, Dr. Deji, into the conversation. Now, Dr. Johnson did mention uh, Aminu Tambuwa, the senator. Now, given that uh, Senator Aminu Tambuwa is an ally of the PDP presidential uh, candidate, Alaji Atiko Baka, former vice president, the presidential, uh, how, how does Tambuwa's uh, loss signal the ascendance of the Nye Sum Wike camp? in the National Assembly. Are there any implications of this uh, power shift? Well, first, two things. First, the emergence of Muang um, Dong yes. uh, um, cements this administration's hold on power because the role of the minority cannot be ruled out, most especially when the gap between the majority and the minority is not as much as we used to see in the early days of our democratic dispensation so, in so 1999. was instrumental in his emergence as minority leader. Absolutely. Because uh, it says it emerged by consensus. And currently, 
Even if not by a wide margin, the APC controls the majority in the, uh, on the floor at the moment. Yes. So if it doesn't have the support of the APC senators, definitely it wouldn't have been mad. And don't they, forget. They, they, they also participate. Exactly. In the and yeah. don't forget that it wasn't through an election. It was via an announcement mm. by the Senate President, Gosula Pabio, saying that they emerged through consensus. Mm. We all know that um, consensus is difficult to come by in our political system, whereby um, they, they, there's so much um, premium on power. Mm. So for the Senate President to have the power to announce, and the implication of that is once he announced, it instantly takes effect. So if it is an election. Um, Don may still have won, but the dynamics will be different. And that is why... Knowing that even the uh, minority parties, the opposition parties, and it's not just one, uh, they are different, uh, it, it would also play a factor. Yes. The fact that you have more than one uh, opposition party. No, yes. the thing is, um, APC went for someone they think they can work with, not the most competent. I believe in this case because if we check the history of the the, the, the other person, Aminu Tambua, aspiring for the position, if um, if you look at his political trajectory, he seems to have more experience than the person more that was done. eventually announced. Because Tambua, having been a former speaker of the House of Representatives and served as a governor for eight years, uh, the um, the senator Wang Don was a former member of the House of Representatives from. Play to state mm -hmm. um, is an academic. So, if you look at the political profile, um, Tambua stands more chance to have performed better in that position. But the political dynamics of the moment does not favor him, and that is why somebody who is a co-senator but of less experience was able to emerge. So, if the election, if it wasn't by selection, if it was by election. Definitely, we would have seen a lot of political gimmicks mm. as far when the Senate president also emerged a lot of, you know. Yeah, but not everybody is happy. The National Working Committee just said that, you know, they don't recognize uh, this uh, people that were announced by Senator, Senate President Gosula Pabia. What are the implications of that? Well, the thing, um, absolutely, it has no implication. It's just talk. Yeah, it has no implication <laughs> at the moment because um, we need to know where to draw the line. When senators emerge, although they emerge on the platform of your party, but now they are senators, and that level of independence should be there. I don't believe that we should have a senator and house of representatives whereby um, um, constituted of different political parties, and you now have one political party imposing, allegedly, on a house that is constituted of so many political parties. I think that is wrong. Once people emerge as senators of the Federal Republic, they should have some freedom to agree mm. among themselves and not be old um, and Sika by the party. Okay. So I think that what the, um, the, the, the announcement of the chairman of the party, Senator Abdullah Adamu, definitely has no effect because if you look at it there's no implication for it. the deed has been done and if you revert back to the case of ndd Elumelu, mm. in um 2019 other political parties said okay they want ndd Elumelu, but pdp at the time um, nominated another person despite the fact that they are the majority minority yes. in that case but at the end of the day ndd Elumelu served the tenure as the um, minority leader in the House of Representatives at the time. So this is history repeating itself, and I don't see much implication coming out of it. Thank you very much, Dr. Deji. Now, Dr. Johnson, uh, the All Progressive Congress, the majority party in Parliament, uh, did uh, want Senator Mark Don to emerge as the minority leader. What does this mean for the Senate? Uh, does it mean that we have a Senate, uh, where the APC determines, I mean, the, the, they determine the majority leader and, and the principal officers, what, uh, does it mean that what, it's been captured uh, and does it make it a rubber stamp uh, National Assembly? What we witness is a state, state capture. 
And what you have witnessed is an abuse of process. What we witness is a lack of respect for the political parties, which are the foundation of the democratic society. And I've said it over time, any party that does not have respect for its constitution will not have respect for the constitution of Nigeria. Any party that does not follow its own due diligence, I witness all of this charade under Buhari's administration, and a lot of people were applauding, they were clapping their hands. At the end of eight years, we are all national at it and facing the consequences of not pointing out anomaly where we see it. For the offices, I just want to correct one impression. For Senate leadership, Senate leader, deputy leader, they are not based on election. They are nominated by the political parties. The mm. political parties nominate based on their strength. The majority party will nominate. So what the Senate president did was outside of the influence of the, you saw what the national chairman said with respect to that. What we have also seen with the minority party, which um, they pointed out earlier, with Tony Illumelu's emergence, with which I also pointed out earlier, with Tambual emergence as speaker in 2011 against Mulikat um, Adiola that was nominated by the PDP, supported by the establishment in Abuja today, playing the game against him. This is the anomaly, and it's not good for our democracy. Because if you don't have party discipline, if you don't have party coercion, if you don't have all of that, you can't have a well-functional government. And someone is saying, they just said that, well, it does not have any implication. If you look at the dynamics of the Senate election, you will discover that the group that lost out in that election, it was a close fought contest. The group that lost out in that election have been sidelined. Just check it out. Check all the principal officers, both from the majority and the minority, are from one camp. And you see the camp that lost out not being involved. Uh, because in, in running that floor, I think I read earlier, earlier this week when someone said that um, the Senate president is not going to, is not going to, is not, is not going to last. And there is, there is an history. And I want yeah, but, but to committee to appointments have not been made, no. so they could still be yeah. no, chairman no, no, no. of these committees. To look at, look at all Senate presidents from the South, all Senate presidents, each and every one of them stepped on a banana pea. Each and every one of them stepped on the banana peel, and that banana peel, Akpabio should have avoided by getting a lot of stakeholders getting involved in the appointment of these principal officers who will be the executive of the legislature in conducting the affairs of the legislature by the composition, by the composition of this, of this body now, you will know that this is complete state capture. It has been mm -hmm. captured by a group and the opposition as far as I'm concerned, as far as they pointed out earlier, is now in good with, because the minority has a role. The minority has a role to play in the legislature. The vibrancy of democracy is based on the majority having their way and minority having their say. Yes, there must be an alternative viewpoint. However, if the minority is in good with the majority, what happens? So it doesn't, it doesn't make our democracy vibrant. Uh, thank you very much, yeah. uh, Dr. Johnson. Now, back to you, Dr. DG. Uh, we've seen uh, the issues that Dr. Johnson just highlighted uh, for it's almost like there's a banana peel there for uh, lo looking at the history of Senate presidency uh, since 1999, especially the Southern uh, Senate president. Knowing that, you know, post-election, there are 109 senators. There are only enough positions to go around. And some are not angry with these uh, leadership positions. A lot of people are not happy. What do you think Senator Pavio should be doing to win the trust of his fellow distinguished senators so that, you know, reforms can pass, uh, legislation can pass, and th there won't be obstacles in his way as the leader of the 10th Senate? What does he need to do to assuage the fears of those uh, that didn't get these appointments, those that are angry with him, uh, and what have you? Um. Before I answer your question, if I can just follow up on something very quickly. Um, you asked me as regards the implication of um, what Akwabio did um, against mm -hmm. the wish of the party chairman. And I emphasize that it has no implication. And if I can stretch it further, 
looking at the political dynamics of Nigeria, the president, Bola Ahmed Tinumbu now, um, he has the power in his hands and is a power-oriented politician. Abdullah Adamu emerged based on the wish of former President Muhammadu Buhari. Now, if we trace the political antecedent of Tinumbu, he is always comfortable with you in a position if he appoints you or he has influence in your appointment or emergence to that position. But I'm he, coming. Yeah. Just a moment. So now, by the time the next election cycle is going to surface, I can say affirmatively that Abdullah Adamu will not be That's the chairman true. of the APC. So definitely what Apabio did has no implication. And now the power is now with the, um, those elected, um, Tinumbu, uh, Shetima, Apabio, and the rest of them. And they now would, they know how to play their politics, whether to retain the chairman or not, rightly or wrongly. So whether the, the, the action of Apabio being in cahoots with the um, opposition, whether it has implication on policy, on lawmaking, and the principle of checks and balances which the Senate is supposed to do as regards um, in relationship with the executive is a different ball game entirely. Now, to your question, Senator Goswila Pabio, what he needs to do is that he needs to be very careful. As my co-panel pointed out, the, 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 the way he has made the announcement, thereby totally sidelining the um, opposition camp. Now we have the, the, the ruling party, and let's say um, about almost half of the opposition is still with um, the, the ruling party. But the other half, these are political big players too. So Senator Bosco now needs. with the other half that is not APC could cause problems. Well, what Senator Akwabio needs to do is to make sure that he now try to make other appointments in, um, in terms of um, this, um, what do they call them? Other appointments into committees. Committees. Yes. Committees, thank you. Now, appointment as chairman of committees, he now has to pacify those that are disgruntled at the moment. Because if he doesn't do that, at the end of the day, don't forget that he also has an opposition but in his own party. But you can't satisfy camp. everyone. Yes, Why do you feel you can't you satisfy have to... everyone. That's correct. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that you can afford to ignore everyone. Mm. In politics. There are implications. Yes. Yeah. You have to look for the greatest number. But based on the political dynamics of Nigeria, and don't forget that we still have um, the, the case ongoing at the presidential election tribunal, which may go either way. So if you don't act well to make sure that you seek the support of your colleagues, if power eventually changes hands, if the judiciary so decides, then Apabe will run into trouble instantly. So he should learn something from former Senate President Bukola Saraki, whereby against the wish of the executive, he was able to spend his time and... Since 1999, the Saraki Senate presidency is one of the most um, robust, the most well, it intellectual. was antagonizing because, yes, his own party the, the, and government. Yes, and times. he was able to kind of like provide a kind of like um, strategic leadership in the sense that there are robust debates. Even though um, his caucus may still have to have their way, but there are rigorous debates because I've watched some plenary sessions and it was quite impressive. Unlike the rubber stamp, immediate past Senate uh, President, you know, President Ahmed Lawan. Thank you very much, Dr. Deji. Right. Now, uh, Dr. Johnson, quite a lot to unpack here. Looking at the bigger picture, how does this leadership appointment impact the balance of power uh, within the Senate? Does it create a more balanced uh, or polarized environment? And what does this mean for the legislative process? I also want to follow up on what Dr. Deji said about the uh, Saraki Knight Senate, is that uh, sort of thing good for our democracy when you know that uh, the Senate is not always uh, is antagonistic to the executive? Or uh, would you prefer a more friendly, a friendlier type of the uh, Ahmed Lawan Senate presidency? Well, um, I want a Senate that serves as checks and balances. That's a requirement. Mm. One of the things we also need to look at is the history of the Senate. Um, if you know, if you read, if you read Julius Caesar, you know what role the Senate played. And then, if you understand the Roman Roman Empire, you know um, 
the power the Senate wields. And the Senate is not likened to the House of Rep, where it's an outcome as affair. You saw the election for the Senate president, how close contest it, it was, despite the fact that the party endorsed Akpabu, the president supported Akpabu, it was a close contest. And that election showed a clear division within the EPC. There is an opposition within the majority. And if you now allow the opposition within your party to join the opposition in the minority against you, and that's the game that is that is that is that is playing that is playing. If you if you look at it, you see, look for example, the deputy majority leader and the majority leader are from the south. Both normally you you balance the two. I, I've gone through the list and. I've gone through the list, both at the House of Rep and the Senate. I've gone through the list, and sometimes politics are about give and take, and there are, there are a lot of gladiators. If you see that despite the fact that the president endorsed Akpabu, despite the fact that the party endorsed Akpabu, Yerima still gave them a good run for their money. Don't forget that the Senate is the retirement home for some of these governors, mm. in fact, most of our governors. Check the number of governors that have retired into the Senate. You see, um, Adamo Aliru of, of, of Kebbi State was interested, according to media reports. Tambua, the former governor, was interested. Yerima was interested in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the Senate presidency, but he lost out. So there are lots of gladiators that Akpabu must understand and know that he needs to manage. He must play the politics of the Senate. Mm. as well as playing the politics of being responsible to the president whose privilege, whose patronage he enjoyed in becoming the Senate president. Now, he should be a man that tries to have control. And how do you have control? It's about give and take. I love what they just said. How did Saraki um, and Senate presidency, why was it robust? At the point in time, in the arrangement, they gave Ali Ndume, Ali Ndume, the, the, the majority leader, but in order to assuage the feelings, not to create a minority within the majority, mm. because Lawan was the president that was initially nominated, Ali Ndume had to be removed for Lawan to become, to become the majority leader under Saraki leadership. So these are the principles of give and take that makes the legislature to work, because the Senate president is just first, first among the equal. If you have this type of arrangement, he will just be on his own. That's, that's just the reality. The reality of the fact is that in the Senate, a lot, all of the senators are holding knife, hypothetically, but according to what we have in Julius Caesar, every one of them is holding yes. knife, looking for who to stab in the back. So Akpabio should just understand that there are 108 senators behind him, interested in the position he's sitting on. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Johnson. Now, Dr. Deji, before we go on a break, uh, looking at the person and uh, where he emerged from, are there any implications of Senator Mwakdon's appointment for the people of Plateau North Senatorial District? How might his new role enable him to address uh, the, his constituents' concerns and represent their interests more effectively, or it doesn't count that well, you know, this uh, is my, <laughs> this is the senator representing my constituency. It doesn't work like that. Well, interesting question. I would have wished if holding a crucial position translates into greater development for your, for your constituency. constituency. That means if you are not holding a crucial position, it translates into development. But if you are holding a crucial position, you have greater development. So even the because, Senate president. But, but yeah. the, the problem is, in our democratic dispensation, mm. if you look at it from 1999 to date, holding any political office doesn't translate into any meaningful change in the constituency. So why for are they example, falling over themselves to have ex this principal position? Well, uh, because power is interesting to hold in Nigeria. <laughs> Nigeria is a country whereby if you have power, you are like a mini god. You can do and undo. You can, you know, have your way. It's a nation whereby, if you are in the right league, there's no consequence for action. So, so it's more so, personal. It's more yeah, personal. Yeah, it's more ambition. personal. And just to serve the interest, you know, um, of the cover, when politicians sit down and they are to take a 
decision based on political research, what happens is you would be shocked that unfortunately in this our climb, the people doesn't come first. They think about, okay, how does this favor my party? How does this favor my leader? How does this favor uh, my girlfriend, yeah. concubines, and all that? That's what comes into play first. So at the end of the, look at, yeah, but look they at are the people's former president, Olusha Gombasojo, yes. for example, spending eight years. If you go to Abekuta today, there's no much difference between um, Abekuta in Ogun State and in, um, um, Uyo in um, Akwa Ibom. So, and Akwa Ibom has not been able to produce a president. So, th this doesn't translate into the Buhari's home state right All now. Right. There's no much, when I mean no more development, I need to kind of like explain. In terms of human development as regards the political elites in the Buhari caucus, there is tremendous human development in terms of being exposed to power and using it to amass stupendous wealth. Mm. I need to clarify that. But when it comes to the effect of, the, on, of democracy itself on the have not the Talakawas, if you go to Abekuta that produce Obasanjo, it's the same as Daura that produce Buhari. It is the same as Otuoke that produce Good luck, Jonathan as president. So at the end of the day, what you will see is um, one does constituency will still follow the tragedy. Don't forget, Senator Ali Ndume was um, a former um, leader in the um, Senate. Now, his constituency at that time was ravaged by Boko Haram. So he, is it that he didn't have influence to speak with the commander-in-chief? But when they get there to that power position, they play politics of self, politics of interest and politics of pecuniary gains. So it doesn't translate much into development for the constituent. But um, before um, I, you know, yield the floor to you, what I can advise as regards the leadership of the Senate is that it would have been strategic if Gotula Pabio had retained um, this Abia Senator, or Jews or Kalu, yes. as it will, because the dynamics the of the web Senate both, presidency, yes. or Jews or Kalu, was to deputize Yari. But when Yari lost, he didn't um, contest. So the, the deputies, Senate president, emerged unopposed. If Yari had won, um, or Jews or Kalu would have been. contested for the position, knowing fully well that it would emerge. So what a public could have done is to have at least yield something to this camp so that it can have one and the half. Now, yeah, what you, he has but, is... But, but do you think it was Papio's singular decision to make? I don't think so. Well, um, it is not a singular de de decision. He would have consulted the president. Why did I say so? The emergence of Okoyemi Bamidele, mm. who happens to be a political boy of the president, speaks to that, that, okay, his announcement as the end of the president. The president. But the president himself should have think that, okay, how do we have at least one and the half? Because right now, what Akwabio have is half-half. In the sense that he has opposition in his party. The Yari Kakos, that is like an half. Mm -hmm. Then he now has opposition in the PDP. The um, Atiku and um, this um, PDP chairman faction, that is another half. If you match half and half, it's going to give us one, which is a whole. So what Akwabio is standing on now is half-half, which is a whole. But he could have been strategic enough to have appointed to somebody like some, Odi from, or Kalu so that yeah. the other camp in his party would have felt comfortable okay. with his leadership. And by so doing, he would have had senators from the party at his own side, then half the wicked camp, which Mark done a match form would have also be in his camp. So that would have been one and the half over two. But now, what he has is half half, which if we are together, is equal to one. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Deji. A fine place to go on a break. You're watching Politics HQ and New Central Television. And uh, we're currently analyzing uh, the new uh, positions that just emerged from Niger's uh, National Assembly. Do stay with us. Our conversation continues shortly.
Welcome back to Politics HQ and New Central Television. And I still have with me Dr. Gide Johnson, Director of Special Programs. Nigerian Institute of Journalism joins me live from Kaduna in northern Nigeria. Also have in the studio Dr. Marshall Adeji, uh, political scientist. And we've been uh, talking about the emergence of uh, new uh, principal officers, uh, to use the word, in the Nigerian National Assembly. Now, Dr. Johnson, uh, considering the distribution of seats in the Senate and the House of Representatives, how does this uh, affect the power dynamics and decision-making process uh, within the National Assembly? All appointments have been made. Uh, the dust is yet to settle. What are the implications of this on uh, the passage of bills and uh, the operation of the National Assembly uh, going forward. What needs to be done to heal uh, wounds and, you know, to also placate uh, people that might have uh, felt some way in this decision-making process? You said earlier, Adidas has given us a clue to that is how it goes about his committee appointment. The next phase is appointing people into the standing committees of, of of the Senate, how is it going to go about doing those appointments in such a way that it balances the equity in the Senate? And we know the normal tradition is for you to give the appropriation committee to the opposition. It's usually the opposition that is the appropriation committee. Those are standard uh, legislative practice procedures, yes. In, in legislative in legislative business. And I think that what they should look out for because look, a lot of Nigerians have high expectation. High expectation in the sense that their hope were dashed by the Boris administration, lack of giving important deliverables of democracy to the people. So um, the the people living below the poverty line increased tremendously in the last eight years compared to what it used to be before. So there's an heavy burden. On the, on the leadership of the Senate, on the leadership of the House of Rep, uh, and on the leadership of the executive. And it's important for the legislature to understand that they are not an appendage of the executive. Their responsibility is to be the voice of the people. What are the things that are, what are the policies that work in the interest of the people? You start that by putting square peg in square hole, not round peg in round hole. Put people in committee where they have the capacity. We recall the Senate president was a victim of that when he was Minister of Niger Delta Affairs. You mm. recall the Honorable Minister of the Mic. Yes. The Honorable <laughs> Minister of the Mic is now the Honorable, is now the distinguished Senate president. So all of these are very, 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 very important because the experiences which are probably acquired as a governor that he acquired as this minority leader, which eventually he decamped to APC, and then as a minister, now as Senate president, he needs to bring it to bear because a lot of Nigerians are disillusioned with respect to what the future is holding for them. And the only way we can do that is by getting the right people in the right position so that we can get deliverables of democracy. If we do it as business as usual, if you give people position based on, the poli on, on political patronage, not on the base of competence, capacity and character. It will still be the same. We still come back to the same cycle. It's just unfortunate that if you do a content analysis of all the programs we have done in the last eight years, in the last 16 years, in the last 24 years. It seems as if we are, we are in the same, we are in a vicious circle. We keep saying the same thing and things seems not to change. They just said something which was instructive. If you go to Daura, even Uyo is better than Daura. Uyo is better than, uh, is better than Abekuta. Uh, Uyo is better than Notuiki. So if you go to if Senator Alim Dume couldn't go to his constituency throughout four years that he was Senate majority that I'm not too sure whether he's, he's even gone, he's even gone to that constituency. Most of them, the Senate president, there's no way the Senate president will have traveled to UP by road when he was say that's Lawan, when he was the mm -hmm. ninth Senate president. So all of these things they need to put into focus. There are people there that were yesterday, today they become history. They, they have an opportunity of writing their own history now. It's by doing the writing. Put the right people. Let there be a spread. These people are elected. Don't make it to be a one 
a one a, 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 a winner takes all. The beauty of democracy is getting everybody involved. When you get everybody involved, when you have robust debate, then you, you, have, you give a sense of belonging. And your quality yes. decision, your your quality decision will lead to good policies, good policy that will enforce and stabilize your government. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Johnson. Very well said. Now, Dr. Deji, could you explain, for the sake of those that are not familiar with the legislative process, uh, the significance and responsibilities associated with the principal positions of the National Assembly, the positions of minority leader, deputy minority leader, uh, the minority whip, and also the deputy whip within the National Assembly. How do these positions impact uh, legislative processes and outcomes? Well, the principal officers are uh, the drivers. Like, um, let's imagine that the Senate is a big boss. You have um, drivers, um, conductors, and all that, you know, to make sure everything works fine. So, like every other organization that has its heads that serve different purposes, so also the Nigerian Senate has its principal officers whose main responsibility is to ensure that the running of the um, um, legislative arms of government aligns with the dictates of the Constitution and it protects the sovereignty of Nigeria itself. So for the minority leader, the House is comp comprises of different um, political parties, different associations, caucus groups and all that, mm. but we could now bring it down, narrow it down to two, which is the minority and the majority, depending on the party or the, 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 the platform which you emerge from. Mm. So it is assumed that for you to be able to get a united voice from the minority, they should have a leader. Naturally, the majority already has a leader in I mean, the they Senate presidency. Yes, yes, they should the, still have a sense yes, of belonging. Yes, yes. yes. the, the, the um, majority already has a leader in the Senate president who is from their party. Mm. But beyond that, the Senate president also has to delegate duties in terms of consultation because there are politics on the scene, there are politics behind the scene. So for the behind the scene mm. politics, the Senate president may not want to go lobbying around. So that is why he has a majority leader to make sure he rallies members of the majority for a united front when it comes to crucial um, legislation and debate on the floor of the Senate. The same also applies to the um, minority. Then the whip. Well, it is believed that um, human characters, human behaviors are different. So when you have, uh, when you are equals, how do you put your colleagues in check? Mm -hmm. Because we all um, came from different background, orientation, and all that. That's why we have the whip to make sure that the conduct of the senators align with the um, the, rules. The, the rules, the Senate rules in this case. So that is the main function of the leader and the um, whip on, um, in terms of the majority and the minority. But if you would permit me to please add something. Now, what something has been missing, democracy should bring development. But the democratic parties we have now will not give us any development or give us little... What, what, what's your reason for saying Little this? or no development. Because there should be rigorous policy debate, mm. which is missing. What the political class have concentrated on is how to retain or regain power. There is so much focus on power. Who becomes who this? Who gets what? Has been the main focus um, pre-election and post-election. And at the end of the day, we move from one phase to another. Who becomes the president? The president emerged. Then the struggle for who becomes leader and all so that. So where two hundred million Those ones have emerged. Now, this, now yeah. another struggle will involve in the Senate as far well, who is this committee or the other. Everybody wants a juicy in court committee. You know. So what we should be seeing, if we want to have the development that democracy is meant 
to produce as a system of government is a situation whereby we have policy debate. Why is restructuring important for Nigeria at this point? And why should we go back? What are the implications? Mm. How do we strengthen our Those are the kind of policy debate that not, would not power to that, yes, yes, that would translate into development because whether we like it or not, thank God for your life, I thank God for my life. Nigerians are suffering. Suffering seriously. If you go to the street, you will see pure poverty. Nigeria is a country whereby you see stupendous wealth and unimaginable the, the, poverty the, the, lining side by side. So if we have policy debate between the um, ruling party and the opposition and the, mm. um, the cabal itself, about how to move Nigeria forward, that is missing. What we have now is who should do the, the um, party leadership. Mm. Just stand on, oh, they disobeyed us and not state the reason well, this based is on the policy appointed, this and is the appointed development. Candidate. I, I want uh, Dr. Johnson to have a say on this uh, last question before we wrap up our uh, conversation. Now, Dr. Johnson, the next uh, port of action, point of action for the Senate would most likely be the appointment of uh, committee chairman, uh, but the executive and uh, legislature relationship, the next uh, point of duty, because a lot of Nigerians are waiting, uh, uh, anticipating the ministerial list. And this brings me to my question. In the past, the tradition is that, you know, the DSS does a security check. They see that, okay, this individual's uh, passed uh, this security test. Uh, names are sent to the Senate, and uh, they question them for a bit, and then they say bow and leave. These ministers are very important. They're the ones uh, that will uh, execute uh, the president's uh, policy programs, and we're expecting that in the next uh, few days. Uh, do you think the Senate should change uh, its approach towards the screening of ministerial nominees? Because you, what, what we often have is a list with no portfolio, uh, so as to avoid uh, square pegs and round holes. Do you think this would be a better approach uh, to this uh, exercise? Zig Ziglar said for us to continue to do the same thing in the same way, in the same manner, and expect to get a different result is the beginning of insanity. We have tried that for almost a quarter of a century. Where has it led us to? Um, how would you be screening somebody in vacuum? What are the questions you are going to ask them? You want to be a minister of the Federal Republic? Minister for what? We should be able to screen. Don't you see the Senate hearing of nominees, nominees to even federal courts in the United States of America? You should designate the position. If It's just that the legislators have done themselves to be a rubber stamp. And that's why... The executive make every attempt to control the legislature. And we have systematically seen that capture with the removal of Okadibu by the Obasanjo administration. That capture of the legislature, we saw it with mm. the removal of Okadibu. All the state house of assembly in Nigeria, they are an appendage of the, uh, the exactly. governor. So we have, we have removed speakers of state house of assembly. Then we have even removed, I don't even know, ministers in Nigeria mm. or, or ministers in Nigeria or even commissioners. So why how would you screen a, a, a nominee? On what basis will you screen the nominee? Under normal circumstances, what we should have done is for the president to send the list and designate them the position he's going to put them. And each of these nominees, we face the committee members. The committee members will vote and advance. We should learn how things are done in order to advance our democracy. But, you know, people will say, oh, let us continue. The president has the power. The president, the president does not have absolute power. He does not have absolute wisdom. That is why in the institution of democracy, you have the legislature in the kind of presidential system we practice. We have the legislature, you have the executive. They have rules to play counterbalancing each other. So we need to deploy that. They need to screen them. The president should designate them with position he wants to put them. If he does not trust the legislature with the responsibility of people knowing where these ministers are, the portfolio that these ministers are going to be given, then why are they screening them? So as far as I'm concerned, 
I think that we shouldn't even have more than 36 ministers in the first instance. If the president is saying okay. that you have come up, you've come up with different types of policies to mm. to cut, so we must reduce the cost of governance. Uh, exactly. We should have more than 36. That's 37 in actual sense because of federal capital territory. Mm. Which the cabinet should be more than should be more than that. Anything other okay. outside of that will be going contrary to what the president is asking Nigerians to do. Thank you very much uh, for your contribution and insights, Dr. Jide Johnson, Director, Special Programs, Nigeria Institute of Journalism, who joins us live from uh, Kaduna, and also Dr. Marshala David uh, Deji, uh, political scientist. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you again on Politics HQ. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now it's that time for me to give you something to chew on after this quick timeout.